This is an educational video on the spinal anesthesia fluency for the Roslyn Franklin University Nurse Anesthesia Program by Doctoral Project Candidates Vansa and Samantha for the class of 2021. The fluency is broken up into three sections, pre-procedure, procedure, and post-procedure. After obtaining informed consent, we will gather our supplies by going through our mismates. Make sure that a full machine check has been done and that you have a self-inflating Ambu bag. Make sure there is working suction and oxygen. Monitors including EKG, pulse ox, blood pressure, and oxygen with end tidal. Emergency airway equipment, good IV access with adequate prehydration, any drugs you will need for the procedure and emergency drugs, specials including PPE, clean gloves, the right size sterile gloves, a cap, a mask, and eye protection. For the procedure, you'll need a chlorhexidine swab, spinal kit, and any additional needle that you may want to drop into the sterile field. Different spinal needles have different benefits. Non-cutting tip has less of a chance of postural puncture headache. Cutting tip requires less force. Make note of your bevel location so you have all of it in the intrathecal space. Choose the correct length for your patient's body type. The bigger the gauge, the smaller the needle and less of a chance of postural puncture headache. Position the patient properly by asking them to arch their back like the letter C or an angry cat. Use the landmark of the patient's iliac crest to find two fierce line at L4. Use your hands to find the patient's spinous processes for midline and choose an interspace in between two aligned spinous processes. If you are having difficulties, you can always have the patient sit straight up and reposition themselves. Or if landmarks are difficult to palpate, the use of ultrasound may be helpful. After performing a timeout and washing your hands, it is time to clean the patient's back with chloroprep. Warn the patient that it will be cold and start at the insertion site, going in concentric circles. It is important for the chloroprep to dry for at least three minutes to prevent neurotoxicity, and while it is drying, we can prepare our spinal tray. The spinal tray can be opened with clean gloves making sure not to contaminate any of the sterile areas. After donning sterile gloves, we will prepare our spinal tray and medications. Because we used chloroprep, the betadine is not needed. In the kit is a sterile barrier that you can use behind the patient on the bed to keep that space sterile. There is a fenestrated drape that has an adhesive strip to secure to the patient's back and allow you access to a few inner spaces while keeping the rest of their back sterile. And pre-made and blank labels for labeling syringes. We will now prepare our syringes and medications. Be sure to have any medications you want in your spinal available on the field or have someone there to assist you in sterilely drawing up the medication. Take care when opening the glass ampules not to cut yourself or leave sharps exposed. Always verify the dose of the medications and expiration date prior to drawing them up. The longest needle in the kit is your spinal needle. Uncap your spinal needle. You can identify the side the bevel is on by finding the raised edge on the stylet. Inspect your spinal needle before placing it on the sterile field. You also have to uncap and inspect your introducer. We are now going to use our 3 ml syringe and filter needle or filter straw to draw up the 1% lidocaine that will be used for our skin wheel. Draw up 3 ml of the 1% lidocaine. Then, remove the filter needle and exchange it for a smaller, less stimulating 25-gauge needle. 
Remove all of the air from the syringe and uncap the 25 gauge needle. I like to arrange my tray in order of what I use with what I use first, furthest from the patient, and what I use last, closest to the patient. Now, attach the large filter needle to the 5ml syringe and draw up your dose of your spinal anesthetic. In this case, it is a 0.75% bupivacaine in a hyperbaric solution. Determine the correct dose based on the procedure to be done and your patient's height. Remove the filter needle and rearrange the needles and syringes to your preference. At this time, if you are adding any opioids such as Duramorph or fentanyl, you can add them now. We will begin the procedure by placing the sterile drape. Warn the patient that it is going to be cold and sticky. Be sure not to contaminate the drape while removing the backing to the adhesive strip and securing the drape to the patient's back so that your target inner space is in the middle of the opening. Remind the patient to get into the correct position. Grab your 3ml syringe with the 1% lidocaine and find your target interspace. Warn the patient it will sting and burn. Raise a skin wheel and inject lidocaine through the needle's path. You may use it as a finder needle to locate any os in your projected path. Next, insert the introducer just until seated. Hubbing the introducer in a petite patient could puncture the dura. Insert the spinal needle with the bevel up the needle will pass through skin, adipose tissue, the supraspinous and interspinous ligaments, ligamentum flavum, before passing through the dura with a popping sensation. Remove the stylet and observe the free-flowing CSF. Grab the 5ml syringe and attach it securely to the spinal needle. Aspirate and verbalize the presence of the CSF swirl then slowly inject the medication into the intrathecal space. Once you have injected all of the medication, aspirate again and verify the presence of the CSF swirl. Withdraw the syringe, needle, and introducer together. The type of block you wish to have will determine when you reposition the patient. The baricity of the local anesthetic and patient's position will determine the spread of the local anesthetic. Placing the patient in Trendelenburg position will increase the cephalid spread of the local anesthetic, while reverse Trendelenburg will slow the cephalid spread. Appropriately dispose of all equipment and sharps. Be ready to verbalize your plan for hemodynamic changes, including IV fluid, ephedrine, glycopyrrolate, and phenylephrine. Document the procedure appropriately in the EMAR. Assess the spinal level bilaterally with a broken tongue depressor, glove of ice, blunt tip needle, alcohol swabs, or cold hands. Congratulations, you did it. That was a basic spinal anesthetic. We would like to thank the Roslyn Franklin University faculty and staff, our fellow SRNAs, clinical preceptors and facilities, and our supportive friends and family. Thank you.